All right, so you see what I got going there. And let me explain how I believe this, they want this to work, which uh, you know how I am. I can't leave it alone because the way they've got it working, I just don't, uh, I don't agree with it. But maybe I'm wrong. <clears throat> so what they've got here, what we have here is a failure to communicate. So if you look at, look underneath how this is supposed to go, they've got it sliding right up to the rail and they've even got it tapered in so it'll be a really nice fit. There's a little tab that comes out right in here. So that'll go right up to there and that'll weld from right here around to right there. And then you can weld down the side to this sheet metal. But the only actual real heavy steel is, is your frame rail which this is like eighth inch steel or whatever. Well, this is eighth inch steel as well. So that's, that's gonna be your only link, uh, strong link, I'm gonna say, I'm not the only link, but only strong link, and the only place that's really hanging on to that frame rail. Because what they want you to do, they want you to cut this part right here away so that this can slide through. Okay, so that'll slide through and then you can see here what they've done is they've just welded the top to this little this piece right here which is 20 gauge sheet metal okay so you see where I'm going with this and we're trying to make this a freaking uh, spaceship rocket ship I want to fly this thing into freaking into uh, outer space so it needs to be stronger than just your normal street car. So these aren't going to cut it. I mean, these are torque boxes, but I mean the the the, the thickness of the metal and all that, and then taking this eighth inch steel and going to this box, and then just welding it to this box for the most part. It, it, you can see they. It's just not even far enough. Now maybe that's the way they had to make it because. You know, nobody wants to pull their torque boxes apart, but I mean, ultimately you're cutting through that. They don't want you to cut through your torque box, but they want you to cut through that. Why not just, so let's, let's do this. So if you, you can, you can picture what this looks like now. Like I said, it's under here. It's like that. And it would weld there. If I'm, if I'm catching this right, this flange welds to the torque box. Torque box will be welded down like it's supposed to be, which will be welded into the floor pan, which again is just sheet metal. But I'm trying to build a structure here that's going to hold a high horsepower motor, and I'm going to build a cage to where this thing is like hopefully bulletproof, if you get what I'm saying. So, <clears throat> and I thought that's what they would be thinking as well because they're selling you pieces to build a car that you can put on the track. Now maybe this maybe this works, maybe it works fine. Uh, but the stiffer, the stronger it is, the better you would think that it would be. Um, so let me take this off here and kind of show you what I'm talking about. Let me put you on a tripod, that way I'm not making you dizzy. I'm just trying to reason this out in my head because I'm buying these parts thinking that you're just going to be able to weld these in. Now they make bolt-on parts too. Um, the DSE doesn't, but some of the places do. Um, and but I wanted them welded in. I figured the welding would be stronger. But if you're just welding it to sheet metal, then what's the freaking point? I mean. It would it seem like if that flex, it would bend, it would twist, especially going into a, you know, curve going like maybe pulling a G or whatever. Um, so, let me take this apart and kind of show you what, what they want it to look like. So basically, it'd be sitting right like that, and that's the blocks are just kind of sitting there, kind of jacked up. But I'm going to go ahead and take the torque box off and leave this sitting where it is. Let's just slide this torque box out from underneath here. Okay, now you can see, let me leave it there. Now let me 
bring you back here and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, there's what you've got. And you can see how they've, you know, how they've done this. Like I said, this will be welded to the torque box, which is fine. Um, but literally, all you're going to be having was be this one weld bead right through here. That's it. So my thought is why, and it's not completely straight and everything, but it will be. So my thought is why not uh, somehow bring this on into your frame to where you can weld it, you know, all the way through this, this square. Or, you know, at least bring it into where you got a piece coming into the top of it um, and tying it into your frame rails because that right there just does I mean like I said that's man you're talking about twisting that's just not doesn't seem like maybe I'm wrong you know and then of course maybe once you get your roll cage in and everything it's just beyond amazing but that doesn't look beyond amazing to me uh, that looks beyond ridiculous actually so I'm going to have to come obviously come up with an, another plan for this which I'll end up cutting a hole in my torque box here to, and, and probably modifying this rail to be able to come in here and tie in somehow so I'll end up lengthening this because this is set where they want it. it they, they've got a template that tells you to come off your, your you know, square up your subframe, come off your subframe, blah, 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 blah. But for me, uh, having it, this, you know, seeing this, I'm like, man, I just don't, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm going to have to come up with a different plan. Um, and since I don't have my subframe connectors in there, you can see the holes down. You might be able to see those holes. That's where your subframe connectors, those little holes right there on each side, those are your subframe connectors will tie into. Um, and these come back just a little ways from those subframe connectors, and then they have these plates that actually weld to your subframe, your subframe, which is great. That's perfect. That's the heavy duty plates. They're eighth inch steel. They go right into your heavy duty subframe, which is great. But this seems like a weak ass link to me. Just, just my thought, especially after man building this monster back here and then having this little thing here it just doesn't seem quite enough but that's how i got to do everything because that's the way it works so i will be probably modifying this somehow maybe maybe just simple enough to make a plate that comes out and down welds to this and ties into this other you know that's like an eighth inch piece of steel there that i actually built into that um, at least at least then it'll be hit top and bottom and sides and I will go ahead and weld it to the sheet metal like they did right there just for aesthetics but that's not necessarily going to be that you know anything for for major strength like these will be so I'm gonna have to give that some thought about how I want to do that and again i have to line all this stuff up and get that distance correct so i've got some more uh thinking to do and i need to get these prepped up um i got to figure out if i want to go ahead and cut these now go ahead and cut the this sits in here like this so I've got to cut this area right here back a little bit to where I can get in there and weld that. Okay. Um, and then go from there. So, but yeah, at the very least, I think I'd like to have a, another piece of eighth inch steel, which I got plenty of eighth inch steel. I got a whole freaking sheet of it over there. I've got tons of it, uh, tons of this crap. Uh, because I bought that big giant plate because I needed just a little piece. So I've got tons of this stuff um, everywhere. So that's too thin, but I can cut a piece out of that 
and well hell that might even work but let's take that back out of there and look at it uh, no it needs to be something like that except for maybe just a little bit longer in that one area so I could actually bend it into that area and make that one smooth transition um, and I don't know about coming in from inside I could actually do something to come in from the inside maybe and then weld around these edges and then I don't know um, but I'll kick it around and we'll figure it out so um, but it's probably not going to happen today because I've got some more thinking to do on this so um, I'll go back to the planning phase and see what happens alright guys so I've got a plan for the uh, underneath we got it figured out and but before I do that when I put these back up here I just still didn't like the way they were sitting uh, when I clamped them down tight so what I've decided to do was just to weld them directly to the frame the subframe underneath so what I'm gonna do is cut out this portion of the floor leave just enough basically I've got it scribed here but leave just enough to where I can flange it and then drop that down around this that way the floor comes down level and I've had you know takes up this this gap space whatever so that's what I'm gonna do um, I didn't necessarily like thinking of the fact of welding through the sheet metal anyway or trying to cut it away or whatever so this way it's gone and I don't have to worry about it's gonna be direct to the frame and the way I've got my uh, where we're gonna set the torque boxes up is go basically right through the torque boxes uh, not through the torque boxes but I'm gonna have a I'll have to show you when I get to that point but once I take this off I'll bring you back and I'll, I'll give you an idea of what what I've got going on all right got this back apart so I thought I'd take you along for the plan change uh, there's been quite a few plan changes this was a big one so what I did was I cut those out completely minus what will happen at least the plan is is the uh, pockets will and this has been flanged the pockets will sit up underneath here so I'm going to go down on top instead of having those go on top because I, I think I mentioned earlier I was having problems with it lining up just right through everything so just cut that problem completely out and so anyway um, on this let me find my I don't know what I did with it huh you see it in there I don't see it no, I cut these holes got these all staggered up getting ready to cut these holes same same um, so my bar is probably laying right here on the floor somewhere oh there it is so here's what we've decided <clears throat> I'm gonna set this in here this this goes right in there like that we talked about that and there's there's this big gap so probably what I'm gonna do is modify this lop this sucker completely off completely off just take it off there and I'm gonna get me a piece of box steel just like this and make the piece that I need to come out to come up and integrate into sorry I can only do this one hand but integrate into you see what I'm saying fill that hole basically so it'll be welded underneath down the sides on top pretty much all that so that's kind of where I'm at with that now 
I have to do quite a bit of measuring. I still need to, what I decided I'm going to do, because these bolts in here, yeah, there goes that. These bolts in here um, are have this locked down to this jig. So once I, I'm going to weld a plate on here, um, and then my torque box will be welded to that plate also. And then again, coming in, having, and one thing I was going to tell you is the torque boxes are 16 gauge. Originally I was thinking they were 20 gauge, but they're 16 gauge, so they're a little thicker steel. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I'll, I'll plate this off just like I did this all the way down to here. And then um, I'll have my plug weld holes here, probably three of them to plug weld into the torque box. And then I'll come in with my uh, subframe connector and then figure out where I need it. I'll probably, once I lop the top off of that, I'll probably put four holes here and actually plug weld it to the bottom of this. Um, anytime you, anytime you, you weld across something like this, anytime you weld, a, like if you're welding like this, it's not that big a deal. When you weld across something, it's a bigger deal. It's, it's, it's kind of a weak point, I guess, from what my understanding. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug weld. Now I can come back and weld through there too, but if I've got these plug welds in, that'll be better. Uh, then I can probably also uh, you know, weld around this little plate here because with this top piece off there, I'll have plenty of room. Okay, And then I can come back in with my new piece, which like I said is basically, hell it's the same stuff as what I've got here that this this is made out of it's two by three so all I gotta do is take another piece of this cut it cut a channel out of it elongate it and run it straight into to the torque box and then tie all that together so that's that's the plan uh, I'll have to do some measuring and make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be I'll measure off the front holes where the subframe goes in uh, underneath uh, I've got a subframe outside. I'll measure back how far they're saying from DSE to measure back um, and all that kind of stuff. So ultimately what will happen is I'll have my subframe connectors in. Everything will be in that like that, welded in, and then I can just lay this floor down on top of it. Um, basically is, is what will probably happen. I could change my mind a couple times in between there, but... Anyway, that's that's kind of the plan, but I have to get these uh, I have to get these pockets welded down to the frame, um, and so that's what I'm working on now. So we'll get these done. I've got to sandblast the insides. Uh, I've got to weld through the flanges here. Actually, here where I'm going to weld here and here. You can see I've already weld through all of this and these flange areas here. Uh, I didn't mean to pop, actually, I d yeah, I did. I actually didn't mean, didn't think about it, and I popped all these, so I'll have to weld those shut from the bottom, but that was a mistake. Um, which I could actually weld from the bottom, it doesn't matter one way or the other. It would have been easier to weld from the top with the, the pan on, or the trunk pan, but no, I decided to do it the hard way. I wasn't thinking when I had it upside down, I was thinking, okay, that goes on top, and yeah, whatever, so. You're gonna make mistakes along the way, stuff like that. You just have to deal with it. Um, on this thing here, I did this one right uh, because these, if you see here, these actually have this thing. Well, I was thinking they went straight down when I cut my first one. So as you can see, the se this is the second one. I came down and I, I left that for the flange and whatever so I could you know, weld that and the whole deal. Well, that one's just a square. I cut that sucker hole all the way out. So this little piece isn't there. So it leaves that gold frame showing, which is no big deal. I can, you know, weld a piece in there if I want or whatever. It, it, that doesn't, this just doesn't make that big a difference. The, the good thing with this, it's like my buddy told me, when you're working with wood and you cut something too short, it's too, you're, you're screwed. It's too bad. But if you're working with metal, you can always put it back. You can always weld it back in, weld the piece back on. That's, that's the beauty of it. So, 
Anyway, that's it for now, and um, I'm going to get back at it. See you. All right, there they are. Um, they're ready for sandblasting. I'm going to just sandblast the uh, underneath side for now um, and get that ready for the uh, welder primer. But you can see, went ahead and went in, took the time. This is um, a 5 16 hole. Went ahead and, and used the step drill to go ahead and chamfer all of these. Looks like I missed that one, but the rest of these look pretty good. And uh, so then, yeah, I'll sandblast it and get rid of, you know, any kind of whatever. But I like to, what I was going to say is I like to chamfer these edges because it actually gives you a little bit more into the material if you think about it. It's almost like the V, um, you know, when you're, when you're welding something, you always want a V, whatever it is, and it's almost like a V shape in there uh, when, you're, when you think about how that's going to fill in. It gives it more weld to fill into uh, that surface area. So it's my opinion. <clears throat> anyway, and really to me, my opinion is the only one that counts. So, you know. There you have it. Let's see. So, da, 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 da. Hmm. And. That looks better. Anyway. I cleaned it all up with isopropyl alcohol. It's ready to ready to go. So I gotta put another coat because I went ahead and ground. Remember I ground all these off. You can see the little light. I need to go ahead and put another coat on that. And it is almost five o'clock, so I'll probably hit that, prime those, let that sit overnight, let it kick like it's supposed to, come back out here tomorrow, pin them down, weld them down, and uh get this thing ready to drop on um, and of course I still got to actually I'm not going to drop that on I've got to do these once I got these on I'm going to move to these and get that set up torque boxes prep those blah 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 on and on so there you have it see ya oh there are those I got another coat maybe two coats to put on them I need to get another can of that, which that stuff's expensive. But uh, yeah, these will be ready to, to weld on tomorrow. So maybe that's what we'll do. Depends. Uh, I got my baby girl this weekend. My wife went out of town with my daughter and my daughter-in-law, and they're partying it up. And so just me and baby girl and dogs and cats and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Alright, see ya.